We have a problem. Hmm? The VIP shirt is ruined. Oh, blimey. It's only made in Sri Lanka. Okay, order two. <laughs> Sir, we must apologize profusely for damaging one of your valuable shirts. But the good news is we have exactly the same one. Oh, you shouldn't have. I could have borrowed the same brand from my colleague. Gentlemen Beyond Boundaries, Emerald. Well, it, I must say that it goes back quite a long way to be honest. It goes back to 1995. And uh, I always thought that I wasn't good enough to play cricket for the country. Uh, because, you know, there comes a time that you realize if you play cricket, how good or how bad you are. So, I, I felt that the next best seat or, or the next best option uh, to playing, uh, for, uh, you know, for one's country is to be in the media. My initial thoughts were to be a radio commentator because, you know, when we were small, when we were young, we used to listen to test match special, ABC, radio. So, we never had television as you know. You know, television came in only in 1978, if I'm not mistaken. So, before that, it was all radio. So, we get very used to the names like John Arlett, Brian Johnston, Christopher Martin Jenkins, Alan McGillray, even Jim Maxwell, who's, you know, commentating today. The, these are very big names. So. You know, we get fa I, I used to get fascinated by the way they used to describe the action. You know, so that's what really drew me to it. You know, I, I thought that that might be an area that it's, it's worth, uh, you know, exploring. So, that's how it all started. Well, I have had my ups and downs. I have had, I had my uh, valley and the mountainous experience. You know, I have been a victim of, uh, <laughs> I should say, uh, cricket administration. I was identified as belonging to a particular group. And when the other group came in, the first thing they did was they take you off commentary because Sri Lanka cricket still has the right to nominate commentators to the international panel. So, it was a very difficult road where you had to maneuver. And besides, I have, uh, you know, uh, experience the usual jealousies, the usual, uh, uh, you know, backstabbing and uh, the usual thing that goes on in life. But uh, it's been an enjoyable uh, journey. I give glory to God. You know, I, I, I am a Christian. I, I am a born again Christian. I believe in God. I pray a lot. Well, there have been quite a few moments. There have been quite a few moments. I started in 1996 where I was, you know, doing updates for a local uh, radio channel and Sri Lanka won the World Cup. I was there in that final and that's the only 50 over World Cup. In fact, that's the only World Cup Sri Lanka has won because World T20 is not called a World Cup. It's really called World T20. But a World Cup per se was won in 1996. So, I had the great privilege, you know, in my first ever assignment on a, you know, foreign, uh, uh, you know, trip or, or, or an assignment outside Sri Lanka where I just started you know, to be part of a history-making event. So, that will always uh, remain, you know, in my memory. It will be itched in my memory forever. But besides, the fact that I had this great um, opportunity of, uh, you know, commentating in some massive, uh, you know, stadiums like Lords, you know, where you walk on that pitch. I had the privilege of doing an interview with Sir Ian Botham on, on the Lords pitch. You see, those are inexplicable, uh, you know, moments commentating at MCG, SCG and then uh, I commentated uh, in the old Headingley uh, commentary boxes, you know, where it was a very small box and when I sat there, I kind of thought, you know, this was a place that has been used by some massive names, big names in, in, in the media. So, you know, things like that, you know, and, and also the fact that uh, I had the opportunity of sitting together uh, on the same level with the people who have captained their respective countries, who have been legends, superstars and argue, disagree, agree and, and for them to accept what I say 
and you know that kind of thing so you know many experiences you see i have had the experience of uh, where you know certain commentators don't give you too much of space where they like to always be the dominate dominating force where they like to have the final word and you just you know just sometimes become become a spectator and you play second fiddle so such commentators you don't enjoy working with them you know because once you sit there i still remember tony greg you know the late tony greg whom i admired a lot he gave me one advice he said you know when you start commentary and when you sit there you just think that you're sit in, in his words in the aussie words he said it's like you sitting uh, you know at the bar you know on a bar stool with your with your with your friend with your mate and just discussing over a drink so that's exactly what you need to try and replicate when you're doing commentary i found lots of people you know sunil gavaskar tony greg uh, ramis you know the list is so long i might miss out a few names but quite a few uh, you know good interesting commentators to work with i also had a few boring ones and difficult ones but they are very few they are really few see lahiru tirman is a young cricketer who is still a youngster who joined my club when he was just 15 years you know he was introduced to our club by his uncle viraj tirman who has done a lot for the two boys lahiru and tulanidu because as you know they have no father so when he came to ragama cc he just simply uh, confirmed what we saw in him and uh, my of course there is this uh, you know feeling a little bit more or a greater affiliation because we go back a long way and he plays for our club but i believe i have said it openly i have no problem about it i've written about it that our cricket our batting has more than a technical problem i don't know whether it's technical problem my argument is that okay let's take lahiru out of the equation you remove angelo matthews from the, from the picture tell me one batsman who's scoring one batsman who can be singled out as he's been good there isn't anybody but two players whom i thought who could have achieved greatness were lahiru tirman and dinesh chandimal i also thought a lot about uh, ashan priyanjan unfortunately fell by the wayside but i still feel that he can come back and uh, when you look at the way they started you know look at the way chandimal started he got 100 at lords everybody were in awe you know they were so impressed by the way he got that 100 in lords sri lanka won you take lahiru he was the man of the series in the asia cup he had a decent world t20 where sri lanka won he got runs in the 2015 world cup in australia and new zealand then i did see him getting off a plane in in sydney when sri lanka were on the back foot he got a 90 you know coming in uh, at number 3 against the likes of michel johnson siddle and and the rest now what am i trying to say here if these guys were average or below average they can't be or they won't be able to perform at that level and 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 show their metal so you could see that they have done it now in any batsman's career you will find temporary blips you will find temporary drops but they pick up and and they maintain their average or or they keep going up but my question is why are our batsmen particularly these two just going downhill so i support not tiri a lot because he comes from my club but i support the young cricketers because there is no doubt in their quality i always believe they have quality and i was quite happy to see what one of the legends of sri lanka cricket aravind de silva had said about lahiru tiriman you know it's put a lot of arguments lot of debate in my opinion to rest when someone like arvind speaks where he says that you need to allow him well it's it's a very challenging tour it's a very very tough tour and i want to be positive about it and i want to say that this is a tour where heroes can be born you know it's a tour that the sri lankans are going to be fighting with their backs to the wall you know first test is at headingley where the ball moves you know in in may it just moves ideal for the english faster bowlers 
and the second test is at Durham which is as bad as Headingley from a batting point of view when it comes to the subcontinent. So it's very clear that England are having a plan. They're trying to demoralize Sri Lanka. They're trying to hit them hard in the first two tests, take them to Lords if you can just knock them off and then go to the one days with Sri Lanka demoralized unit and you know looking down the barrel and you know with their shoulders dropping. So, you know that's what they're trying to do. So and this side is an inexperienced side that hasn't really played too much of cricket in England. So that's going to be a challenge. Whilst I say that the fast bowlers are good, that's an experienced combination. Experience you need is the batting. So I, rather than saying that the batting would, uh, is suspect, which is true and will struggle, I would rather say that this is a tour that heroes can be born. You know, one or two can put their hands up and be counted and save a game or two for Sri Lanka. And that, I think, is the way to look at it. But having said that, it's a very, very tough tour. We need to understand. If we lose it, nothing, nothing surprising about it. But if Sri Lanka can draw it, say, come out of it, say, with a 1-0 defeat, I think that's as good as a victory. Well, I'm a marketing professional. I have been a marketer all my life. And um, that's in terms of my... Uh, you know, professional career. At the moment, I am the manager director of a company that is marketing two of Sri Lanka's leading cosmetic brands. Uh, that's what I do as a job. Uh, my family are married to Krishanti, and I've got three kids. My eldest son is 25, he's a medical student. My daughter is a law student, she's a law graduate, in fact. And my youngest boy uh, is into business. Uh, administration and he's just enrolled himself in a business degree course. Well, I've been blessed by a very uh, good set of people in my company, you know, a very efficient team of uh, people so I can keep away even for six months knowing that the company will, uh, you know, run well and operate well. It, it, ha it has happened because uh, there was a time that I looked, I, I just worked out, uh, worked on my figures and, uh, you know, cricket had taken me away from, uh, from work, say, almost 130 days, 100 to 130 days, you know, touring and, and, and also local games. So, it's, it's almost about one third of, of, of your time of a year. So, with all that, uh, things have survived. My family has survived. My wife has been a real uh, strength to me where she's ensured that uh, the home is uh, very well looked after, the, you know, growing children uh, are taken care of. It's, it's not easy. It's been a tough, uh, uh, I would say tough challenge, but, but it's, it's been tough, you know, especially for the family because I'm not, on most occasions, I'm not around. I've missed so many birthdays, you know, I've missed anniversaries, I've missed weddings. But then that's the other side of this. As much as you enjoy doing what you're doing, and you, in, you, you bask in whatever glory you have and whatever, you know, that you, that you have when you're, when you're close to the action and then, you know, you, you just watch it and enjoy it. The other side of it is that you, 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 you sort of are quite away from your family. So, you need to balance it well and so far I managed to do that. Mm -hmm.